Hey, what's up guys? Chip Walters here for another Blender tutorial. And today we're going to talk about smoothing and the importance of smoothing in polygonal modelers. So first let's start by understanding why we need the concept of smoothing. Here we are, we're looking at a, a series of polygons and you can see it's flat shaded. We probably want this to be a rounded surface, but it's not, it's rendered flat. So let's talk about the importance of normals. I'm gonna tab into this and you're gonna see these little purple lines coming out. And when you look at those purple lines, they represent the normals at the edges. And the way they're set up is that there's actually let me scroll down here you can see this there's a normal for every single face that normal goes completely across if I were to draw for instance all the normals that are used as this surface is hit by light all the reflection of the light would be following these normals and then when we get to here they're going to go in a different direction right and here they're going to go a different direction so and there's these gaps between these and that's why that's why we see these faces represented here. So let's take, let's go back here and look at this again, tab into it. I'm going to go ahead and hide the face normals real quick. So right now we see that we do not have a smooth mesh. So I'm going to tab out of it and I'm going to click the smooth button, tab back in. And now you notice that all of the normals at the edges are coincident, meaning that they're all the same. So that means that if we look at the normals as they're coming out, they're fanning so they're they're fanning like this and and when light hits this it's going to give us the impression that we have a smooth surface there so to go over this one more time because we're using polygon modelers we don't really have any true curves so we can't have real smooth images so we use a rendering trick using these normals to interpolate the normals across the smooth area and this is what allows us to create the appearance of a smooth surface when we know that we're working with polygons. So now let's see how we enable smoothing in Blender. Here we have this cylinder. I'm gonna go under and check this matte cap over here and let's choose something a little more shiny. There we go. So we can kind of see what we have. And we can see that the cylinder is very faceted. So what we want to do is we want to smooth it. So I'm going to come over here and hit the smooth. But when I do that, notice that the vertices got smoothed completely all the way around this. Okay, here we see the normals and you can see they're all fanning out in this weird direction. And that is the reason why we have this kind of wraparound effect because we're interpolating the normals from a straight vertical here to a straight vertical here and they're wrapping around as they go. Here you can see the normals as they appear on these faces. They're straight out. So they're basically interpolating across these surfaces. And that's why we're having this problem. So how do we fix this? Well, if it's a very simple model like this one, it's pretty straightforward. I will go into the data object tab and I click this auto smooth and notice that it automatically fixes our problem for us. And this angle means that if it's two polygons that are next to each other have an edge that has greater than 30 degrees, it will be smooth. So let's take a look at what this really means. I'm gonna drag this out. Now we know that this is 90 degrees. It goes straight off and then down, that's 90 degrees. So as I drag this, when I get close to 90 degrees, you'll see that it goes back to the way it was previously. So anything less than 90 degrees is going to be good here. Typically, a good rule of thumb is probably around 40 degrees if you're just trying to smooth a generic object. Over in SketchUp, we have a similar kind of problem. Here I have a disk and I'm going to push pull it and I have a correctly rendered cylinder. And the reason why it's correctly rendered is because this disk is a circle. The entity info is a circle and SketchUp understands that a circle will have smooth polygons on the outside. Now if I want to, I can select this and I can soften edges and now you can see that we have a more faceted looking cylinder. Again, just like in Blender, as I drag this out, you'll see that once I get to 90, over 90, I'm going to get this artifacting. 40 is a good number for us on this. But there are some edge cases that are a little bit more difficult for SketchUp to handle. Let's take a look at those. So let's look at this object right here. So if we look at this you know, on this side, you'll see that this angle from here to here is very shallow. I'll select it all, and as I start moving this over, you'll see that there is no setting that allows me to get an actual smooth. These are, these are hard lines here. These are creases in the model. So that, there's no real setting that's going to allow us to get us smooth. So what we have to do then is we have to go in to do is we're going to have to 
basically manually sharpen or crease these edges. So the way you do that is with the eraser key, control alt shift, two, three, four. There we go. And now it works. Now that's great and that works super, but one of the issues with that is if you're having to do anything else in here, like add a Boolean object or something, and then you come back in and you have to adjust it again, you end up again having to go through that same process. So let's go over in Blender and see how they handle this issue. Back in Blender, here we have our widget and let's tab into this and let's look at it and what we want to do is we want to do the same thing we want to basically create these edges to be creases so blender has some pretty good selection tools i'm going to go in and go into my edge mode i hold the alt key down tap here i get the whole ring do the same thing over here with the shift key down so i can get both once that's done i can go over here under mesh and edges edge data and mark sharp or I can do control E remember control E for edge and go edge data and mark sharp so now that I've marked that sharp I'm gonna tab back out of it and you see that it looks great now I can change this the smoothing angle all I want and it's not going to affect those sharp edges I can also go back into this and I can say under select select the sharp edges so this will give me all the sharp edges that's how you deal with smoothing in blender now there's a couple other things I want to mention if you look at the edge menu and let's go back in let's tab in here and let's select an edge and we have some other things we have edge crease so edge crease works with a subdivision modifier edge bevel weight works with the bevel modifier we're gonna talk about some of these later mark seam and clear seam this is for UVs and of course, we already went through Mark Sharp and Clear Sharp obviously does the opposite. And then we'll get to Freestyle and Clear Freestyle Edge at a later date. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.